Hi, I'm Dr. Bear, and I want to give you a brief introduction to Mathematica. This is a powerful software package for doing lots of incredible things like symbolic calculations, and you can write scripts and other sorts of things, but I'm just going to give you some basics, and we're going to work with some symbolic calculations here. We're going to work with notebooks. These are files that contain many related calculations. You can also write Mathematica scripts, like I said, but we're going to focus on notebooks, of which I have an example here that I've prepared. But just so you can see, I'm going to bring up a new notebook by going File New Notebook. And I'll bring it over here as a untitled notebook. And the point that I'm making here in the other notebook in the background is that we put things in cells. So for example, I can start typing. So I type this is, and I can get this option here, convert to text cell. And so I'll finish the thought, a text cell. If it's a text cell, it really doesn't do anything. Other cells you can do are input cells. So let's just make an input here. I'll put 3 plus 7. And then to evaluate this input, I have to have my cursor in the cell. And then I have to hit Enter. And on a Mac, and this is actually a Mac, so I'll use Shift Return, which is Enter. And it says, OK, the output is 10. Uh, that's a brief introduction to the notebook concept here. To get a new cell, when the cursor goes horizontally, you can click and then you can just start typing. And then again, Shift Enter will evaluate it. And so there's nothing more specific than this expression A plus B, so Mathematica gives me the output A plus B. It doesn't know any better. So I'm going to close this. We'll go back to my more interesting document that I prepared for you. So we just talked about cells and notebooks and files. One thing to important to note in Mathematica is the use of delimiters. Parentheses are important for mathematical operations and groupings, just like when we write things on paper. Braces form lists, and brackets are for functional inputs. Now, this differs from most other programming languages because when you write a function and you provide inputs, you usually use parentheses, but in Mathematica, brackets specify function inputs. And then we separate list items and function arguments by commas. So our first exercise here is to define b as a list of integers from 1 to 5 inclusive. And so I'll do that here in the solution. So I click and I type b. And the equals sign is the assignment operator. And so now I use my delimiters for a list which are the brace. And I type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then if I hit Shift Enter to evaluate that on my Mac, or just Enter, I believe, on a Windows machine, Mathematica shows me the output. And I can type B in a later cell and evaluate it. And it spits out the thing that is stored in the variable B. I can reference this by typing B. And then I put in double brackets. And if I put in 2, I get the second element. So let's evaluate that, and it spits out 2. I could change it to the fifth element, and I get 5. So that's just an example here of making a list and then referencing the elements of that list. So I'll delete those. One thing I'll note is if you get your hands on my notebook here, in all of these exercises, you have I provide you with cheat text uh, and a solution window. So you can open the cheat text like this, and you can get commands you can copy and paste. We'll uh, get rid of that list B, and we'll move on to symbolic calculations. Mathematica is very powerful as a symbolic calculator. Sometimes you need special symbols, and you can get them through Mathematica palettes or keyboard shortcuts. So for example, Greek letters, you use the escape, and then you can type the first letter in our English alphabet for spelling the Greek letter. And then you press escape again, and you get the Greek letter. So for example, if I want pi, I escape, and then p. And then it gives me a bunch of options. But if I know what I'm doing, I can just hit escape, and then I get the pi. Or I could escape, and then ps, and I get psi. And so you kind of get what's going on here. Now, Mathematica recognizes pi as a mathematical constant, which is nice. So let's do this exercise two. We're looking for the integral of cosine two pi f t over t goes from zero to one. So I'll just get a palette. So here's palettes, and I'll pick the basic math assistant palette. Here's the basic math assistant palette. And we see here an indefinite integral. It's indefinite because it has limits. So what I do is I put in zero, 
here and then I click here and I get I put the one in and then cosine one thing to point out here is when you use Mathematica functions you use we call them out by name and then we have to capitalize the first letter usually or other letters but generally it's the first letter is capitalized in Mathematica functions so we'll put here two and then to multiply we put a space so we put two space pi and then space f and then space and t and that's the multiplication operation by the space and then we're integrating over t and so if we just evaluate that there's the result okay now here's another example let's find the expectation value for psi of x and here I've defined psi of x for you uh, it's zero outside of the range uh, zero to a I put in a typo here let's make that x okay now here's how we define the expectation value it's this bar x and I'm going to change the notation here I changed it so uh, we'll use bar x instead of angled bracket x we define bar x as this where we have the complex conjugate of psi times x times psi and we integrate that over all space and since this is a quantum mechanics example, I just point out typically in quantum mechanics we use this symbol for the expectation value, uh, but right now we're using this. Um, An expectation value is the same as the average or the mean or the expected value. So to evaluate this, we're going to put in here x, and then I'm going to highlight x, and I'm going to go to my palette here, and I'm going to click the bar. So there's that, and then I assign this variable a value that is an integration. Now, here, notice that we're, you know, the definition goes from negative infinity to infinity. However, psi here is non zero from zero to a, so we'll use the limits zero a. We don't know what a is. And I'm just going to copy and paste from up here. Copy, paste. And Mathematica says, okay, I can paste traditional form, but I'm just going to paste the literal so it looks like it's an input. It really cues the eye here. So there's the psi complex conjugate because I'm assuming here that everything's real, so that the complex conjugate is the exact same as the original function. We multiply by x and then we put in psi again and we make sure that we're integrating over x. And then if we evaluate that, it may take a few moments, but it spits out an answer. Now, sometimes Mathematica can give you a very ugly result, and you can reduce it some using the full simplify command. And I'll just put in here x, and then I highlight it, and uh, add the bar again. In this case, Mathematica really didn't do anything to that expression, but there have been cases when I've used full simplify and it really reduces it a lot. Now, other times you can uh, you can specify some constraints, but we won't worry about that here. Finally, well, you can see that I, ha I have a section here on visualizing functions, but we're going to stop at exercise four because I want to show you symbolics, and then in a later video we can look at visualization because Mathematica does that too. But for now, we'll end with symbolics. So, so we're asked here to symbolically integrate this function, this expression, so I'm going to start a new cell and I'm just going to copy it and paste it because I can. And there's a nice symbolically integrated thing. Let's see what happens if we store it as a variable and then we use full simplify. Okay, it really didn't do anything, but you know sometimes it really is quite helpful to use full simplify or full simplify with a constraint. So that will be enough for this video. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like the video or like and share my channel or subscribe to the channel. And feel free to leave comments below. Tell me how useful this was or how not useful it was. And I may also provide you this example notebook if you want to work with it. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. Goodbye now.